When I came to Bangalore, the year was 2003 and the biotech industry was very small. In fact, even today it's not very big, but yeah, it has definitely progressed. So in those days, I used to meet when I was building biotechnic, I used to meet a lot of people in the biotech sector and pharma sector. And they all used to tell me a mantra because of course I was trying to build biotechnica. So they used to say all these mentors. So I met so many mentors, many of them are millionaires and billionaires also in the biotech industry. And they took, gave me a mantra. They said, Shekhar, if you want to succeed in your company, you need to hire smart, but you should not hire smart. Okay. You should hire smartly, but don't hire very smart people or over smart people. I was like, why is it so? Generally, the thumb rule is that we have to hire someone who is smarter than us and then uh, proceed forward, right? So I was like, that's really uncomforting, like discomforting. How can it be? That's not right. So that's where uh, one of the CEOs of a company, he came forward and he said, you see what happens when you're trying to build a company, your aspiration is to build a company, but the person who's joining you, his aspiration may not be to help you build the company. So what happens is he will work with you for three months or six months. He will leave the job, right? And then I said, yes, that has happened to me. Uh, the first employee of Biotechnica left within a month, right? So this happens. Now, that is the reason industry, even I, I don't prefer and the industry does not prefer over smart people or people who act smart during interviews, okay? And this is a good news for all those students who feel that they are not smart. Who, who feel they are not really very sharp-minded and very, very high quality. No, the industry is not looking for a very sharp-minded person. They're looking for innovative people. There's a difference. Creative, uh, critical thinkers and creative thinkers. Okay, They're not looking for sharp people who are highly aspirational. So if you are going for your interview in the biotech and pharma industry, and if you you know, say that I am here for a few years and I want to do my this, that or higher education, whatever. The industry may not take you. Okay. You, you have to know this, that every company is built to create a dent in this universe with their products and services. Now, if you can help them build that product and service, they will hire you. And they're not looking at someone who will just join, learn everything and then leave the job. Right. Industry always hates people who switch jobs and you know, jump jobs. So if you are joining a, any company, please make sure during the interview, you don't say that you want to jump the company within one year or two years, because that is where you will straight away get rejected. But this is the industry secret I'm telling you because I, I know the pain of building a company and I know how difficult it is to build a biotech company. And it really takes a lot of guts and courage for the founders to build a biotech company. So when they are interviewing you, they will definitely ask you a question which will be how long you want to work with me. And if that answer is not satisfying them, they are not going to hire you. That's the first point. Second point is don't act smart during your interviews. Just even if you're not dumb, but still, you know, at times don't be try to be over smart. Don't say that, oh, I know everything about your company. I know about everything about the job. I know everything. So when you, when you start showing that trait that you know everything about everything, that's where that's a big turn off for the interviewer because there will be two reasons. One is they are senior people. They have seen many people just like you. They easily know that a person who is acting that he knows everything actually doesn't know anything. Okay. Now, this reminds me of an incident where I was interviewing a person and um, she was very promising. She was a PhD from Germany. But I end up, ended up rejecting her because on one hand, she was portraying that she knew everything. On the other hand, her aspirations were very high because she didn't want to stay within my company. So why should I take her? Because once we hire a candidate, we have to train the person. We have to go through the pain of making him understand the smaller fine prints of our company. And then when he leaves, now we are again back on the square one. So companies don't want to hire someone who has this problem. Okay. So it's okay to be aspirational. There is no problem. But in that case, don't join a company just for a temporary purpose of a few months while you are, you know, uh, planning to jump to the next level. Instead, just stay put wherever you are, finish up whatever you want to do, and then finally join a company where you want to stay along. Okay. 
and this is one of the reasons why uh, you know companies hate you know hiring freshers because occasionally and most of the time freshers jump jobs because they think that i'm getting paid less so let me jump that's one of the reason of course the second thing is they feel okay i should go for higher education or phd so you know this thing kills the freshers of the next generation so suppose you did this it will not hurt you the next set of people who will come as a fresher it will hurt them because the industry will not hire so even if you are a fresher you got a job stay put there at least for a year or a year and a half before jumping jobs because people don't like jumping jeans okay they like people who stay and who are stable and that is why they always look for not very highly aspirational people not over smart people but people who are average but who stay longer uh, i'll give you an example i have at least five people in my higher management when they joined they were very young unmarried and not so smart okay they 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 started from scratch from the bottom of the pyramid but they have stayed with me for past several years now like decades now right and now they are sitting on the top of the management why that happened because they were not very highly aspirational instead they wanted to get into the company and grow along with the company so that's the answer you should be making when you join a company or when you are in the interview that i want to grow along with the company as long as i'm getting growth opportunities and that i think is a great answer to your question and of course interviewers will love that question now having said that one of my millionaire mentor told me a game changing line and he said that you can instantly outshine you can as a job seeker or as a professional you can instantly outshine 90% of the people by simply delivering on your promise okay so you have to deliver on your promise and the next time when you will apply for the next job also the next employer will see how many months or years you worked if you are a, a job switcher or job hopper they are not going to take you so this is these are the fine prints you should know now at the same time you all should know this that even if the company where you are working right now is not growing if you can help them grow by 1% you can be in the top 1% of the management of the future okay so that's how it works that's how the biotech industry works i told you the entire thinking process of how a founder how a ceo how a recruiter how a technical guy will think before hiring you so keep that in mind now coming to the next question which is like how much we should demand as a salary i believe that it's completely up to you how much you demand but still you have to make sure that it is matching with your expenditure and the company's budget many a times you may be the right fit but they will reject you even without telling you because you opened a big mouth and demanded a eight figure salary which they may not be able to afford because they have limited funding or they are right now struggling with funds however my suggestion is get started and grow grow along with the company growth is the glow which you deserve in biotech industry so these were the some uh, fine pointers which i wanted to share uh, i know you might have more questions so what you can do is put them down in the comment section i'll try to answer them individually however if you have any question which is personal and you want to share with me in a email you can always write to me at shekhar@biotechnica.org my aim here to make this video was just to enlighten you on how industry thinks so that you can strategize accordingly and get better results let me know in the comment section how was the video i'll see you soon in the next one till then take care bye bye